Hi, my name is Dr. Tibor Lazar. I'm the owner and surgeon of Lazar Veterinary Surgery. I'm now going to talk about total ear canal ablation, commonly referred to as TICA. So this is a procedure that we do mostly in the dog, but occasionally in the cat, and it's typically a treatment for a very chronic ear disease. The classic dog would be a Cocker Spaniel, although we do do it in a, a number of different breeds for different reasons. Uh, I want to show first a couple of illustrations before I get into the procedure. Uh, I do want to thank Webster Veterinary Supply for allowing me to use the uh, DIA app illustrations. I think it's a great program. So what we're looking at here on the right side is a normal ear canal and ear of, in this case, a dog, but it really looks the same in a cat. This section here is called the middle ear, which is also referred to as the bulla. It's basically a chamber of the skull where sound resonates before going into the inner ear. Um, here we're looking at the external ear canal. It's different than in people. For us, it's a very straight, it's a horizontal canal that goes to the tympanum or eardrum before getting into the middle ear. <coughs> Hi, my name is Dr. Tibor Lazar. I'm owner and surgeon of Lazar Veterinary Surgery. I'm now going to talk about total ear canal ablation in the dog and cat. Uh, this procedure is commonly referred to as TICA. Um, before I get into the procedure itself, I want to go through some anatomy, some of the illustrations here. Uh, I do want to thank Webster Veterinary Supply for allowing me to use their illustrations. This is the DIA app for the iPad. So we're looking at the ear canal of the dog in this case, but it looks the same in the cat. It's interesting, it's noteworthy that it's different than it is in people. The ear canal in people is straight, while it's more of an L-shaped for the dog and cat. starts out as the vertical portion, and then it goes horizontal before getting to the tympanum or eardrum. And then it enters the middle ear, which we call the bulla. It's a chamber off of the skull where sound resonates before going into the inner ear where the sound is actually um, interpreted, I guess you would say, to the brain. Um, so up here for some perspective, this is the pinna, this is the ear flap that you would uh, commonly be seeing in the dog. Uh, what we're seeing on the left is a typical scenario in a Cocker Spaniel. We see other dogs, but that's certainly the, the most notorious breed for having chronic ear disease, chronic ear canal disease, where we see chronic inflammation, which leads to narrowing of the ear canal. Even though the ear canal is fairly normal, near the eardrum itself, I think you can appreciate that with this severe narrowing it's very difficult to fully clean the ear to get the debris out and so in fact what happens is that we deal with chronic ear infections which causes quite a bit of pain for the, the patients and very commonly we see a rupture of the tympanum and infection down in the middle ear as well. So quite a bit of pain involved and sometimes other clinical signs. There could be a head tilt, the head goes off to the side, <clears throat> which could be just due to pain in the middle ear, or we could be seeing some effect to what's called the vestibular apparatus. The vestibular apparatus is where we get our balance, and if that has an infection or at least inflammation, then it can affect the way the head is positioned. So when we have mild cases of ear disease, it's not unusual for your family veterinarian to recommend uh, medications, antibiotics, anti-inflammatory medications, and sometimes a, a deep ear cleaning which would require general anesthesia to flush out the ear. But once we see this type of a chronic change, that's just not going to work anymore or it's not going to work very effectively and you're going to find that your pet is still quite uncomfortable and has to go back to the vet on a regular basis. So in those situations, we talk about removing the ear canal to uh, get rid of the problem. So it's hard from this perspective to see, but essentially the surgical procedure is a circumferential approach. We go around the ear canal all the way down the vertical and horizontal parts, getting down to the tympanum itself, and then we remove what is left of the tympanum. Usually it's already disrupted. <clears throat> and then we will actually open up the bone where it enters into the bulla to get a, a nice opening because in these cases we also see infection in the bulla. We need to scrape out, 
clean out the infection, as well as the, the epithelial lining. There is a layer of cells that if we don't remove that, then we can see a uh, recurrence of clinical signs. The infection can persist. Once we have that all cleared, we flush out the bulla, and then we simply close the incision. The ear flap or pinna is actually left in place. That's not removed. What you will see following surgery is just a closed incision where you would expect to see a hole that enters down to the ear canal. So now we're going to talk about some potential complications. One of the most serious complications is damage to the facial nerve. The facial nerve runs near the ear canal and the surgical manipulation can cause a temporary damage in some cases and in fewer than 5% of cases we'll see a permanent damage. What you will notice clinically is that your pet will not be able to blink on that eye uh, that's associated with that side of the surgery. This uh, loss of blink needs to be treated with eye lubrication several times a day until the blink returns, which in many cases will be two to four weeks, uh, and in other cases it could be permanent. Uh, overall, there's less than a 5% chance that it will be permanent. Another serious complication is a permanent head tilt. I mentioned uh, that in some dogs and cats before surgery we'll see a head tilt. Sometimes the tilt will not go away and at other times the tilt was not present but it, it will be present after surgery. It may go away or again it may be permanent. It's not a painful condition but they uh, will certainly look a little bit different uh, in the way their head is positioned. Another serious complication is recurrence of infection, um, and this can occur within months, or I've seen it even a year or two following surgery. And what you will notice clinically is uh, one of several things. There could be scratching at the side of the face, there could be a puffiness associated with the incision area, or some patients will have pain in opening the jaw. If any of these signs are seen, we would aspirate the area, culture, and hopefully we can clear it with antibiotics, but unfortunately in many cases that is not effective and then we need to re-explore surgically and find where the root of the infection is. Um, most cases are treated effectively with this second surgery. <clears throat> so overall this is a, a very effective surgery for treatment of these chronic uh, otitis cases and most owners are thrilled that they've done the procedure. It seems to bring new life to their pet. They're much more comfortable than they've been in a long time. We'll also do this procedure for tumors in the ear canal, especially for malignancies. As long as a malignant tumor is contained within the ear canal, removal of the tumor with the associated ear canal can be a curative in most uh, pets. But if it's ruptured out of the ear canal, then the surgery will not be effective because the tumor will come right back again. So there is a certain amount of testing that may need to be done before surgery, whether a CAT scan or at, at the very least an examination of the ear canal under anesthesia.